Now, you're welcome back. So, as I'm sure you know at this stage, ultimately, despite a brilliant Ulster semi-final win against Armagh on Saturday in a thrilling game as well, there is a cloud hanging over Monaghan GA since Friday. Brendan Ogue Duffy, 19 years of age, he captained the Monaghan under-20s on Friday to an Ulster semi-final win against Donegal. And then a few hours later, he died in a two-car collision on the N2. His funeral is tomorrow. Uh, we're joined to pay tribute to Brendan Ogue by Paddy Kelly, his club team manager, the manager with uh, Monaghan Harps, and by Seamus McEnany as well, the Monaghan manager. Uh, Paddy, usually we wouldn't want to intrude almost on a community in these circumstances, but I know you were talking to our colleague Shane Hannan yesterday at the wake and you said you were more than happy to come on and pay tribute, so we thought it would be appropriate to do that. You're the manager, as I mentioned, of the Monaghan Harp senior team. So presumably you've known Brendan Ogue a couple of years at this. Yeah, well, I just knew of him until uh, I took over Monaghan Harp's team. This is our third year, so 2019, and he was just coming off the back of the under-17 success with Seamus. So, but obviously we'd seen him in Crow Park and I heard the stories about him. So his name went ahead of him before I got to know him. But uh, the minute I got to know him, it was like a once I started talking, it was like, like someone you knew for all your life, you know. So, yeah, he was a pretty good lad, you know. Seamus, you were uh, talking after the game on Saturday, and you managed him at minor level. Yeah, I, I certainly did, Joe. I managed at minor level, and uh, he was uh, our minor captain. And I think uh, you have to bring in this into context. Uh, Ogie uh, was. Monaghan had only won one previous minor championship in 2013 in 65 years. So the number of fellas that has, that has captain uh, Monaghan to minor success is only four, uh, four captains or three captains uh, now in the last 65 years, and he was one of them. And for myself personally, it was, it was an honour and privilege to have worked with him. Uh, you know, he, he was a huge, he was a huge leader in the dressing room. He was an absolute lovely lad off the pitch and like every other 18-year-old or 17-year-old, he was full of development. And you were saying, Seamus, after the match as well, he was your captain, as chosen by the players as well. Yeah, um, I, I decided at the time that, you know, with a lot of different clubs and I, I put it out to the players to pick the captain and we give no names and no nothing. And I had 30 in the dressing room and 24 of them voted for Ogie to be captain. Now, that was an unbelievable scenario because I had several clubs that had maybe three or four representation uh, within their own club, and, and sometimes that, that would be a case from maybe one of their own club lads would, would uh, get votes. But everybody loved him. He was just that leader, and may I add, and, and, and he was also the leader of the party as well. He was a really, there was loads of development in him. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you a short story uh, about him. I remember we were playing in the Ulster semi-final uh, and 10 days before he come to me on the Tuesday night and, you know, there were 17-year-old lads and, and he said to me, uh, Banty says, there's 28 of us as tickets for a concert in Dublin. Would there be any chance if we could go? And I said, um, Ogie, like we have an Ulster semi-final in 10 days and I said, the boys really want to go. And I says, Ogie, listen, uh, I'll do a deal with you. Um, Yes, can go, but there can be no drinking. She's not 18 yet, anyhow, there can be no drinking. And his answer back to me with a big grin and his face was, you wouldn't do that to us, Banty, would you? <laughs> so he was full of development, but the GA community is absolutely rocked in Monaghan. They were devastated. He was, he had a huge future in front of him as an inter-county player, regardless who the manager might be. This man was destined to be a, a leader within within any group. You know, he was he was a player, he was a friend, he was just somebody you'd be really proud of. Uh, and I can only imagine the devastation that his family has. Uh, we, as, 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 as his comrades, as, as his GA family, are devastated. Uh, and, you know, time will move on and will move on for us, but uh, life will never be the same for, for the Duffies again because he was a man that was going to develop into an inter-county player, a player that... His family, his friends, his club would have been proud of, and that's all gone. Yeah, that's the awful uh, thought, isn't it, Paddy? The finality of it and just what it means for his family. I know you were at the wake yesterday. I can only imagine the scenes across all of the town. Yeah, you know, I was speaking to um, his dad yesterday at the removal, and he was blown away. 
like we didn't obviously know we, we were waiting on the remains to come home to the house so we didn't know you presume that these things it's quite a quiet affair to get to the house but his father was speaking of so much pride of the people that turned out he said from Carrick Macross through to Castle Blaney I believe I didn't know but I believe that the Castle Blaney team going a guard of honour right through Annie Yella and um the father said it wasn't hundreds it was thousands of people that lined the road for him but you know it speaks something of a lad of 19 years of age people imagine and you probably know this yourself Seamus he was he was destined to be a county star without doubt but the ordinary person who who aligned themselves with them and I'm speaking about lads that you would never line up with with, with a with an inter-county a future star like lads that done a bit of hunting lads that were into cars they all I seen last night we, we had a there's a book of condolence open at the club and there was guys coming with cars with Ogie when we number plates across the front and you're just wondering who like you know how did he get time to fit like a, 19, a 19 year old what, what, what we can't understand is and you know you look at you know yourself Seamus when you look at young lads in the senior dressing room you don't look at them as young you look at them as senior players you know the minute they go into that dressing room they don't get that by actually they're only young you know when they're in there they're in to do a job and they're in to perform to their best ability but him like i look back now he was only he was only a, a lad like of just now he wasn't 20 until or sorry he wasn't 18 until the following october november but he fitted right in as a senior player and and on, on there we, we played the intermediate championship that year and ogie's job was to mark tommy freeman and everybody knows, and I'm sure you've all heard, like Tommy Freeman was absolute stalwart, but it never phased, never phased Ogie. And when you're looking to, to, to do matchups and you see, you know, maybe an experience against experience, but Ogie just fitted that category. He was doing the job and done a very good job. And I, I was speaking to Tommy's younger brother yesterday and, you know, they all acknowledged he'd done a good job, but, and there was no, it was that respect afterwards. Ogie just carried himself so simple like he didn't flaunt his county stuff about he just went about his daily business and it was just simple it was absolutely simple simple life like yeah paddy it's 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 so un unreal that we're talking about him in past tense and it's unbelievable uh, the journey he has covered at 20 years of age and the people he has touched in all walks of life uh, and and kids at, at pool camps and everything else it, it's very simple. The county of Monaghan, not only the GA world, but the county of Monaghan is devastated and rocked and can only imagine what the family's like. Yeah, you know, we're, we're kind of, Joe, we're kind of maybe, and I'm speaking from the Monaghan Harps management and, and probably the representing the players here, but we're just speaking as a small cocoon. We can't really see outside, you know, the town as such. And when you see matches come in from all over the country, with messages from America, of people from London in America, I just, we can't understand, you know, how did it get to this of a young lad? It just goes to show you the poly head. And maybe, you know, I was just thinking, I was just thinking, actually, I was out, I was out today, I was out in the farm today, and I was just thinking, maybe, you know, Ogie's such a leader among his own peers, and he nearly as if he was guiding them strength-wise to this, to this day. You know, it's, you know, it's just unreal for us, you know? Yeah, and in fairness, the, the GA world is brilliant. Uh, almost every county manager in the country has contacted me over the last 24 hours. And the minor managers, you know, even Gary Duffy from Donegal and the, on the 20 managers of, of Galway and, and Tommy Griffin even rang me today. It's unbelievable, the GA world, how they have rallied round uh, and, and showed the respect and the know to the people of Monaghan and the players of Monaghan and, and, his, and his comrades are hurting. But it's it's a yeah, big community. Yeah. yeah. I, I and that's another thing is parents. Um, you know, I'm a parent and uh Brendan's uh, Brendan's father, Ogie's father, was a is, is a very good man. I'm sad if you listen, he's he's, he's a principal of the local Clash Doriel. There's parents in, in my locality here in the last number of weeks into the last month, and Brendan was their rock. And you know, I'm talking there was a young lad beside us and he spoke seriously well at his funeral. And for him to be in this position is absolutely, that's the most heart-wrenching thing that a man to do so much for other parents. And, you know, even, even football and sport all aside, the humanity of it all, that Brenton is faced with this, and, and his wife, Esther, and his two sisters, two daughters as well. You know, it's just, I, I, that's beyond words. Because And Brenton was, you know, he looks at 
the phone and he's twin, he sees all these measures coming in and that's, I think, carrying him from day to day. And the big challenge after this is, is to support them in the days that are after this when, when things die down, which that's life as well. People go back to normality. You can't keep you can't keep this going and that's the, probably the challenge that lies ahead for everyone, you know? Yes. No, I can imagine that's when that house will find things just unimaginably difficult and Paddy, you mentioned that the messages are flooding in from America and from all around the world. I would think, Banty, one of the reasons it probably registered with people, uh, myself included, is the photo of him proudly standing there as captain before the game. And, you know, uh, picture of health, unbelievably fit, strong. They win the match. He's got an Ulster final to look forward to. It's just unthinkable and completely unforeseeable that a few hours later he's no longer with us and that's I, I think that uh, added to the shock I suspect that, yeah. that people felt and, and again you know ultimately you just think of his family the whole time uh, completely unforeseeable and total devastation for them but I, I think that photo almost and you see that the uh, fragility of life for us all is maybe what registered with people too yeah it's it's frightening um, how minutes or hours can change somebody's life mm. you know he, he got off the bus in Trahan or training ground and rang his father daughter a Chinese for him and uh, he didn't the next phone call was to come out to him and like as a parent myself uh, and, and it, it, sh- it runs a shiver up my back every time I think of it that how devastating that was for his father to come out on the road and, and, and you know and, and, and the process that happened over the next two hours was just unbelievable for them and uh, you know you, you, I suppose you just don't really know until you're in that and hopefully uh, less and less people will find themselves in this position but it's to, to to round it off, Joe. It is a, a very very tough time, and I have great concerns and and, and for for the um, his under twenty one comrades, especially that was on the road that night. Uh, they came on the scene, and yes, Man and Gier are going to help them every way they can, but they have a tough road ahead of them as well. No, they do. And Banty, this uh, and I, I, I hope you don't take it the wrong way, and I'm sure you'll agree. So a match against Armagh then is completely inconsequential and irrelevant and everything else and so far down the priority list after something like this and yet at the same time it's something you had to go out and play so I, I presume you heard the news that evening a lot of the team heard the news that evening were there thoughts of cancelling the game on the Saturday or were you always going to go ahead with it what was that experience like of a team trying to ultimately make something feel and seem hugely important when of course you would have all been acutely aware it's not that important the match I mean yeah, uh, listen, there's nothing more important than uh, life. And yeah, I got notified at, at, at one o'clock on, on Friday night, just an hour after the accident happened. He, just, he, he was only pronounced dead minutes when, when I got notification of it. And, and I can tell you, uh, the sleep was of a very minimum for the rest of the night. Uh, actually, the cancellation of the game uh, never came across my table, to be honest. Uh, we, we never offered that option. Uh, but what I would say is that, you know, maybe uh, maybe it was the right uh, decision to go ahead. I don't know what this, whether there was any negotiation. I don't think there was any negotiation, but the people of Monaghan was in shock and, and maybe they needed uh, their mind taken away from this awful tragedy for a couple of hours. But from a team, uh, we work really hard ourselves. I, I'll be honest, I work really hard on myself uh, to get myself ready for the game, to park the emotions and feelings uh, of what was after happening uh, and to be able to park that and come back to it on Saturday evening was what we had to do uh, because the group of Monon players, we had to prepare them for, for the game that was in hand and there was no word of cancellation. Yeah. And Paddy, for his club teammates who, you know, would have known him years and years and years and um, I, I'm sure a lot of the older lads impressed with how you know you mentioned yourself how he came into the dressing room and instantly at home. Uh, very very difficult for that group to go back into a dressing room and be acutely aware of his absence. You know, we we probably um, maybe it's every manager's different, but I know in our setup we're very much person player second, and um, we we know we listen. We know as sure as tomorrow has to come that we have to get back to football. And we'll probably deal with that after tomorrow. And no doubt the lads know, and I'm sure them under 20s will know, and, and Shims knows this himself. Ogie was the type of lad that he wouldn't, um, 
he wouldn't hold back from challenge. He, he was that's the type of person he was, and he knows this. We all know this is a challenge, but the inspiration part of this is Ogie was a leader, and he would face challenges head on, regardless with being football or in life. And that's 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 probably the message we have to get to the players, and maybe that's the message the under twenties have to take from here. And that's the inspiration. Ogie was a leader. He certainly left nothing behind him in the dressing room. He took every ounce onto the field. And I remember we we were. We were this time last year, maybe a wee bit later on, but getting ready for championship, we were faced with a similar circumstances in our club. <clears throat> and we had to go out and play a game a few days after. And probably things were in the positive. But I didn't know this until I was speaking to Ogie's family that <clears throat> Ogie was probably struggling come to terms of what the outcome could be. But we got the positive news that everything was going to be okay. And the following game, a couple of days later, we needed a big score and Ogie was playing at number six and he went up the field, dodged a few bites and stuck it in the net. And it's a goal that I'll often remember probably going to our game in our head because at the very start of the game our goalkeeper saved a penalty, broke a collarbone. We went two goals down and we end up winning the game. And Ogie was very, very central to that comeback. So, you know, we all know the person he was, but certainly going back to football terms and that has to, that's, that's part of reality. We'll have to get back to football after this and maybe these days, Football isn't the most important thing, but certainly after the funeral tomorrow and the days after that, football will become very important to the lads that he was involved with. And we just have to take that message to the lads that, you know, he certainly wouldn't have been one to hide behind the shadow or he would have faced, he would, he would have faced the challenges ahead and hit and faced them strongly, you know. So that's what's probably going to have to keep us going, you know, Joe. And I'm sure Seamus, Seamus will back me on that, you know. Yes, certainly. Um, but uh, I suppose we're, we're now concentrating on, on uh, how we can look after our players at the moment. And, and Paddy's the same with Mullen Harps and his club people and get us through the next few days. And uh, we we see where that takes us. Yeah. Well, listen, ultimately the, the football will continue and the lads will rally, I'm sure. It's his family again, as you both said, that ultimately face an unbelievably difficult road ahead in the days, weeks, years to come devastation uh, condolences to all concerned you can only imagine uh, thanks to you two for coming on and paying tribute to Brendan O'Duffy Paddy Kelly again is club team manager the Monaghan Harp senior team manager and Seamus McEnany the Monaghan manager uh, thanks gents appreciate you coming on and, and paying tribute thank you, just before just before we go Joe or before we finish up can I thank everybody and I'm talking about the whole of the county all of the clubs the neighbouring county as well People, like, I know you see different counties put things up on Twitter, and especially I know the family was very touched with, with the gesture from the Cork under 20s. You know, the GA community is very strong, and days like this, people might look in and don't realise. Maybe people aren't affiliated with the GA, don't realise, but when you see a grieving family like Ogie's family and their community, and I'm talking about young lads that are just still at school, dealing with a colleague that has died in tragic circumstances, that that support is absolutely invaluable and I want to thank everybody for them gestures and it maybe took effort and it took time but certainly they've been absolutely um, comforting to the families and the people surrounding and I know that from our camp as well and I just want to thank and Joe I know Paddy Talley gave a very good speak uh, talk on, on Saturday before the game in Monaghan so I just want to thank them people for putting them kind words out on behalf of ourselves. Okay well said Paddy Kelly thank you Seamus McEnany